Module four, new findings on the Nexus. I am Professor Baba Femi A. Badejo, course director, Office of the Special Advisor on Africa, online training on the implementation of the Nexus approach. This module aims at analyzing the major findings and key takeaways from the previous modules and tapping from the ideas and findings from the 2021 OSA study, the UNECA study on the five subregions in Africa, as well as analysis from existing UN frameworks and systems. The table of content objectives, situation quadruple nexus, the SDGs and tools for implementing nexus thinking in Africa, case studies and selected data analysis, key findings. Objectives of the module, the ultimate goal is to assist African member states to promote the design and implementation of pillar interlinked, interlinked policies and strategies in national development policies, cognizant of the situational foundation within which operations are taking place in each country. Assess the level of awareness and understanding of the next concept among African policymakers. Provide tools to strengthen an integrated approach in designing and implementing policies and strategies. Strengthen the use of interlinkages to accelerate the implementation of Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063 to accelerate progress towards SDGs. Situation quadruple nexus. SQN framework. As treated in module one, the SQN and SDGs framework is very critical. The quadruple nexus as shown in the diagram below reflects the interlocking relationship of the four pillars, development, peace and security, human rights and humanitarianism, all situated within a foundationally important environment of governance, external dynamics and institutions and resources as overarching issues. This is shown in the diagram uh, with SDGs at the center um, uh, of the diagram and the uh, pillars uh, all uh, existing within the uh, uh, situational uh, foundation. The SDGs and tools for implementing Nexus thinking in Africa. This section presents the findings of the SDG process and outcome indicators for Africa. One, UN development mechanisms, such as the UN system chief executive board for coordination, CEB. The CEB 2021 review submits that addressing the interconnected root causes of conflicts required cross-pillar analysis, collaboration, and proactive prevention efforts with an improved ability to anticipate, prevent, and prepare for major risks. It also stressed the importance of strengthening interagency coordination from planning to implementation and from national to regional level. Breaking down silos is not, not enough. There should be collaboration with national authorities, with the UN resident coordinator paying attention to the situational foundation for the coordination of interlinked pillars. The interlinked pillars are not self-implementing. The situational foundational issues, governance, external dynamics, institutions, and resources are very critical for the design and planning towards an accelerated realization of the SDGs. The deficit in governance, 
and resultant leadership failure, corruption, gross mismanagement of resources, weakened or failed institutions must be addressed. Progress on the interlinkages approach will remain highly elusive without efforts on building on the situational foundation issues. This is very significant for the programming and implementation of the Nexus approach. The UN system should continue its collaboration with existing partners, including governments at different levels, philanthropic organizations, NGOs, and civil society organizations cultivated during the Millennium Development Goals period. The UN system should also expand and seek partnerships with the private sector, especially in the areas of financing, data management, and the implementation of the SDGs. However, it should be noted that the four situational foundations issues are not open to quick fixes. Example, the problem of governance and leadership has been age long and persistent, defying many attempts at solution. Plato pondered on this issue in his thoughts in the Republic where he addressed the problem of leadership saying, until philosophers rule as kings, or those who are now called kings and leading men genuinely and adequately philosophize, that is until political power and philosophy entirely coincide, while the many nations who are at present purus, either one exclusively are forcibly prevented from doing so. Cities will have no rest from evils, nor I think will the human race. The society we have described can never grow into a reality or see the light of the day. And there will be no end to the troubles of states or indeed my dear Glocon of humanity itself. The, philosopher, the philosophers become rulers in this world or till those we now call kings and rulers really and truly become philosophers and political power and philosophy does come into the same hands. Of course, he went on in the story of taking kids uh, when they are very young and building uh, them over time. Um, drawing from Plato's ideas, leadership deficit is not a peculiar issue in Africa. However, Africans need not reinvent the wheel. She could learn from the ideas of others. The transformation of many nations, including China, are very recent. There is a need for a long-term focus on seeking to create a critical mass of leaders capable of ameliorating the visible deficit in leadership in Africa. External dynamics, similar incremental steps towards addressing the problems facing Africa with regards to external dynamics are necessary. Conscious efforts should be directed towards the detailed analysis of bilateral and multilateral collaborations aimed at reducing not only leakages, but also negative, if not destabilizing pressures that stifle growth in Africa. Building viable and supportive institutions is an important goal for any society. This is shown under SDG number 16. Attending to, the, to this goal rubs off on a number of issues of concern in trying to accelerate the achievement of SDGs. Resources. Material resources are abundant in Africa, although capacity building efforts could help with human resources developments. Movement from MDGs to SDGs marked greater commitment to Nexus approach. The following marks the SDGs as more inclined to the Nexus approach. Support cross-institutional collaboration between the member states of the African Union and the UN system. 
advance better understanding of cross-sectorial work and the interrelatedness of goals and targets, and three, promote global and high-level advocacies. Tools and strategies to promote the interlinkages approach. Providing support towards ensuring that the Nexus approach and the relevant analytical framework are piloted in countries. Selected case study countries, for example, can be done through the UN Sustainable Development Framework. The 2019 United Nations Sustainable Development uh, Coordination Framework guidance provides a direction for strategic planning funding, implementation, monitoring, learning, reporting, and evaluation, all done by the UN development system with the host government and partners. Need for national governments to continue to innovate institutionally, especially in critical areas for the implementation of the SDGs, such as national level, legal and regulatory framework. The integration of the SDGs into national strategies and plans. The development of SDGs implementation roadmaps, creation of piloting structures in government and development of aspects of national monitoring and reporting on the SDGs. Nonetheless, such innovation must pay closer attention to the unique tone of situational foundation issues of governance, especially leadership deficit and corruption, external dynamics, institutions, and resources that play out in their respective countries. At the regional and global levels, relevant United Nations development group mechanisms should guide the implementation and use of the analytical framework. Such future efforts should build on existing United Nations strategies and draw on the expertise of agencies already working on risk management and building resilience. Strengthening the capacities of national, sub-regional, and regional entities to identify drivers of conflict, detect early warning signals, and respond quickly to imminent threats. Advocating for and driving joint holistic analysis, planning, programming, and monitoring, and securing adequate and predictable resources for preventing conflict and sustaining peace. There should be greater commitments to ensure greater collaboration and coherence in the activities of international coordination mechanisms, such as the international pledging conferences, interagency standing committee, interdepartmental framework for coordination on early warning and preventive action, the framework team. UN heads of agency meetings, interagency coordination meetings, ambassadors meetings, national coordination mechanisms, joint needs assessments, UN SDCF, and direct budget support. The commitment of the CEB to having a common tool to help achieve an integrated and coherent approach to sustaining peace, improving respect for human rights, and advancing development led to the adoption of an analytical framework on risk and resilience. The analytical framework presents a more proactive, risk-informed, and prevention-centered approach to United Nations system efforts in support of the 2030 agenda that promotes coherent 
and coordinated system-wide engagement. It seeks to advance a harmonized understanding and application of the concepts of risk and resilience across sustainable development, humanitarian, peace and security, and human rights efforts of the United Nations system as a basis to promote coherent and holistic analysis and joint planning. CEB framework. The adoption of an analytical framework on risk and resilience. The analytical framework presents a more proactive risk-informed and prevention-centered approach to the United Nations system efforts in support of the 2030 agenda that promotes coherent and coordinated system-wide engagement, engagement. It seeks to advance a harmonized understanding and application of the concepts of risk and resilience across sustainable development, humanitarian, peace and security, and human rights efforts of the United Nations system as a basis to promote coherent and holistic analysis and joint planning. The framework serves to operationalize the humanitarian development, peace, human rights nexus, quadruple nexus, and complement ongoing initiatives such as the new way of working and the United Nations system strategic approach on climate change action. The framework has three key elements. One, systems thinking. Two, the risk and resilience equation. Three, prevention lens, a coordinated approach to addressing threats that could set back progress to the sustainable development goals, whilst consciously working for progress on the SDGs. Coordination. Maximize existing relationships with national structures like the United Nations systems or the program management teams at the country level. Set up additional working groups or task forces on a more decentralized basis. Design a needed basis and context relevant peace building actors joint coordinating bodies collaborating at national and local levels will help to improve coordination between the pillars. In Nigeria and Mali, there is a Nexus working group and a, Nex a Nexus task force. Even though with limited membership and success, given the lack of particip participation by all key actors, a Nexus task force should serve as forum for strategic discussions for collective outcomes and their implementation at sub-national levels. Readjustment of monitoring and evaluation strategies. A deliberate the linking of outcome monitoring from project implementation. They deliberate the linking of outcome monitoring from project impl implementation. There is need for well-suited outcome indicators across the pillar, in, uh, across the pillar interlinkages or nexus spectrum to have a common basis for monitoring progress. Key findings from the data measuring progress on the SDGs for selected countries using the key development matrix, it is clear that there is still a lot of room for progress. For most of Africa, the disruption by the COVID-19 pandemic necessitates even more the need for the nexus or interlinked approach, such that situations of setbacks on individual and collective pillars can be better managed. Capacity for country 
or national levels implementation needs to be adequately explored. National coordination mechanisms should provide a platform for positive change along with the insight that national development plans are most helpful along with policy and program development and interministerial forum slash task teams. The gap analysis revealed that budgetary support and fragmented financing followed jointly by political will and divisions between actors and then weak institutions are major challenges. Strengthening of political will was key, followed by strengthening the capacity of national systems and adequate and appropriate financing while strengthening the capacity of local systems was also highly regarded. The greatest single, single obstacle for both the Africa we want and the SDGs is instability and insecurity followed cumulatively by social and economic inequalities and political challenges, as well as the multifaceted issues under external dynamics. Many thanks.